Hi, everybody. It is Thursday. Have you got your Sagittarius Independent yet? If not, we hope you hurry and do so because you're going to find something in there that you just can't find here, and you never know what you're missing unless you pick one up. We work very hard to make sure that happens. Don't want you to miss anything. Just want you to get one in there out today and on newsstands or here, of course, at the Independent and your News Today offices. It is Thursday. It is also, of course, the 18th day of July and the day before things are going to heat up. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a few uh, measures that are being taken locally locally as well. I also have just in, we've been kind of waiting for it for a little uh, pre-information from our judge executive, but about a three quarters of a million dollar project coming to the downtown area just approved uh, by the governor earlier today, part of about $16.6 million uh, in projects for transportation improvements. But I'll explain that in much more detail in just a few moments. Indictments from the Johnson County Grand Jury returned yesterday, coverage of the Board of Education uh, meeting from last night, and a host of other news and information. A lot to talk about tonight. Beginning uh, a little bit farther out, well, first, just an update. The heat advisory will kick in tomorrow and last till about uh, Saturday night through the heat of the day by noon tomorrow. It's expected to get up to close to 90 degrees, feel much more like 100 to 105. We'll have much more on the heat in your forecast in just a few moments. I do have some other news, some good news, and uh, even they, officials cited in the report, say that there's much more to be done and this is nowhere as good as what it should be. But now, nonetheless, you have to be at least encouraged about a significant decrease in the number of overdose deaths in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky federal authorities and others are applauding progress in the fight alongside state partners in reducing overdose deaths. We know that United States Attorneys Russell Coleman and Robert Duncan applauded the work today, a culmination of efforts between federal, state, and local law enforcement and health officials uh, as the overdose death rate in Kentucky dropped took a significant dip with 233 fewer drug fatalities in 2018 versus 2017. That still leaves 1,333 Kentuckians who were known to have been lost to dangerous drugs, and that is far too many. But it's a 15% decrease in the number of overdose deaths in our state. Definitely a step in the right direction, according to attorney, United States Attorney Robert Duncan. The Eastern and Western District United States Attorney's offices are actively pursuing the cartels that supply the majority of illegal synthetic opioids like fentanyl and others to the Commonwealth. Uh, in addition, both offices have heroin education action teams that are aimed at reducing the harm to Kentucky families and communities caused by the heroin or opiate abuse that's ongoing and has been increasing and in causing deaths among this epidemic. Among this epidemic. I've seen it, and i got to be honest with you, I haven't done it, but it was very impressive to see because it, it looks to be real as it can be. But uh, just to caution you out there real quickly, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is asking the FBI and the Federal Trade Commission to investigate that very popular smartphone app, the Face app that a lot of folks are doing, and it's a lot of entertainment. <laughs> folks wondering how accurate it can be, but, you know, it looks pretty convincing. This app has been out for the past couple of years, but some celebrities and others have kind of helped it go viral in the past couple of days. It was the most popular app on the Apple App Store this week. Uh, Schumer citing ties of the company to Russia and fear that it might cause some problems there uh, in regards to ties with Russia, even though the team here is not team or the creators are not in Russia, he raises questions regarding uh, the safety uh, in regards to access and other worries that he has about the company selling data using your facial identity and such. Just to let you know, those were fun, <laughs> got to admit. Just got this in, folks, here in McGoffa County. If you're 55 or older, attending a four-hour class can save you some big bucks on your auto insurance. And as such, a special AARP driver safety class is going to be held here in McGoffa County at the Extension Office next Wednesday. Now, there are just so many spots available, so you need to call 349-3216 at our Extension Office to reserve yours. It's just 20 bucks, but if you come in carrying an AARP card, you get $5 off of that, and you can save on your auto insurance for the next three to five years just by taking the class. There aren't any tests, 
and participants will enjoy, they say, this award-winning and informative meeting. It's going to be from 11 to 3.30 next Wednesday. You have to attend the whole class to get the certificate for the discount on your auto insurance. We could all use a discount. You can bring your lunch, but why would you? They're going to have a free lunch there, and they always uh, do lunch very well for any meal that they're cooking at the Extension Service. The AARP Smart Course is the nation's first and largest refresher course specifically designed for drivers 50 and over, and 97% of those who participate report changing at least one thing about the way they drive just by taking the class. Sign up at the McGoffin County Extension Office. With that said, just a quick announcement, and you know, it was just a couple of weeks ago that another study was talking about Moorhead State University and how uh, it was one of the safest in the nation tonight. Another study out of sorts. Uh, we'll have that, even though it's not our local headlines. We have a we have a lot of kids at Moorhead State University, a lot going. I'll start with that. We'll get to Johnson County indictments and other headlines right after these words. Tomorrow is the second and last day of the indoor sidewalk sale at Fraser's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop. You get 30% off Simply Southern accessories. Buy one, get one half off on all jewelry, purses, shoes, women's clothing, and kids' clothing. Simply Southern shirts, two for 30 bucks. Half off select kids' gifts, 20% off Willow Tree, Lucky Bird shirts for $14.99. 30% off Marie Square, 75% off clearance, 20% off Lily Pulitzer, and much, much more. Tomorrow only, an indoor sidewalk sale at the Seasonal Shop. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years. Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Here's a little of what's new at Parkway Gun and Pawn. A big selection of hunting, bully knives, some to use, some to collect, or both, starting as low as $14.99 apiece. Hey gamers, while they last, they just got in two PS4 Pro editions in perfect condition. And as new, still in the packaging, big flat screens at big discounts. A new selection of kitchen gear and appliances, and even a new in the box 30 gallon electric hot water heater. You never know what you're gonna save on, but you're always gonna save at Parkway Gun and Pond. Appalachian Wireless wants to know if you're tired of settling. Settling for a phone you didn't really want because it was more about the cost of the device rather than the phone you really wanted. Well, Appalachian Wireless has the solution, and it's called the Appalachian Advantage. With Advantage, every phone model is back on the table because you only have to pay the taxes on the device you really want. Many of our hottest smartphones are less than $50 up front, then a few extra dollars on your monthly bill with Appalachian Advantage. Payment agreement is required. See store for complete details. Yeah, some good news for Moorhead. It has been named the third best college town in the nation to start a career. This is on the heels of a report that I aired just weeks ago. Anything with Moorhead catches my eye much quicker than it used to when we talked about Moorhead being one of the safest college campuses in the nation. Now the city itself is named the third best college town in the nation to start a career. This list was actually compiled or put together by Grand Canyon University. It was published in the Business Insider magazine, and the list was actually put together by using a variety of different sources for data. The U.S. Census Bureau, government climate reports, job market reports, infrastructure, and the list goes on. It essentially says that Moorhead's downtown area is within walking distance from the campus of MSU, Grocery stores are very nearby, as are several different unique boutiques, restaurants, bookstores, shopping venues, entertainment venues as well. The Moorhead Conference Center, it names the Kentucky Folk Arts Center. Uh, the Moorhead Railroad and Historical Museum. Daniel Boone National Forest being nearby. Of course, Cave Run Lake that offers a lot of hiking, camping, and kayaking, and a lot of other activities. Then this also comes at the same time that the city is celebrating its sesquicentennial. A word that, of course, we learned here in McGoffin County a few years ago, and it took me so, time, so many times to practice it that I'll never forget how to say it. <laughs> Nevertheless, their 150th anniversary of Corporation this year. So some good news for Moorhead. And if you haven't been, just on a personal note, if you haven't been to the campus of Moorhead State University in quite some time, as I hadn't been for many, many years, it is amazing to see how much it and the city of Moorhead have changed, all for the better. 
Up next, several indictments of Johnson County, I believe at least one McGoffin County individual as well. All indictments returned yesterday by the sitting Johnson County Grand Jury. First, a Red Bush couple indicted on charges of wanted endangerment in the first degree. Ricky Fairchild and Kathy Fairchild. Kathy Fairchild's photograph unavailable as of airtime. Both indicted on five separate counts of wanted endangerment in the first degree for endangering the welfare of children, five children, ages 2, 4, 7, 10, and 11, while using methamphetamine with the children in their custody on around on or around June the 22nd of 17 all the way through June the 22nd of 2018 says the indictment again both Fairchilds indicted on the same five counts of wanton endangerment Lawrence Songer of Paintsville was indicted on trafficking in a controlled substance within 1,000 feet of a school for selling methamphetamine within that distance of the Paintsville Independent School System, said Officer Jonathan Holbrook of the Paintsville Police Department. A riverman, Zachary Cochran, was indicted on assault in the third degree for assaulting an EMS personnel who was trying to care for him. Cochran has actually been jailed since the 7th of this month on Burglary in the first, possession of meth, and unlawful imprisonment charges. Corey Taylor of Sitka was indicted on a single count of wanton endangerment in the first degree for causing danger or worse to a Mr. Jason Golden on April the 1st of this year. And this indictment is related to a case that we already reported on, the case against Philip Bergen, now indicted on assault in the third degree of a police officer fleeing on foot fleeing in a motor vehicle, operating motor vehicle under the influence of drugs. This goes back to an incident that took place on June the 24th, just a few weeks ago, when Kentucky State Police were conducting a traffic check or traffic stop. Another vehicle pulled up, and then one of the officers, that being Trooper Ryan Hale, went to talk with the driver, who was Bergen. He asked Bergen to get out of the car, knowing that Bergen had active warrants, but if you recall me reporting, Bergen instead put the vehicle in reverse and tried to speed off, with Trooper Hale jumping in waist first, trying to shut the vehicle off, but Bergen continued to drive, crashed the vehicle after dragging the trooper some 75 feet, pinning him between the hillside and the car at one point, then trying to speed off again. It would ultimately take two officers, a taser, and a physical altercation to get Bergen into custody. He's now been indicted for that on those aforementioned charges. A Sagersville man, Terry Coburn of Falcon Road, was indicted for being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. He was found in possession of a 410 shotgun while behind the wheel after a traffic stop. He was also indicted on no registration plates and other traffic offenses. Kelly Blackburn was indicted on a count of trafficking a controlled substance in the first degree. She was complicit with Joshua Blackburn. Both were said to have been in possession of more than two grams of methamphetamine with the intent to traffic when arrested on March the 21st of this year, according to the case brought before the grand jury. And Leonard Brackett was indicted for trafficking in the first degree, more than two grams. He actually had 14 grams of methamphetamine, plastic baggies, an amount of cash, and other items on him when he was arrested. He's also been indicted for being a persistent felony offender in the first degree for having two prior felonies on his record. There were also numerous other indictments. Lewis Reed indicted for possession of a controlled substance, possession of paraphernalia and, and public intoxication. He was said to be in possession of methamphetamine, possession of methamphetamine charges against a Michael Jennings of Paintsville. Nigel Cavins of Louisville indicted on bail jumping in the first degree, as well as Paul Brooks of Riceville, Joseph Warwicks of Louisa, Crystal Castle of Hager Hill, William Tomlin of Paintsville, William Tomlin again of Paintsville, Ed Pack of Plain City, Ohio, Gary Fraley of Broadway in Paintsville, and another indictment in the name of Gary Fraley, Joshua Fife of Paintsville, all as well indicted on bell jumping in the first degree. I'll be right back. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. 
If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Big Sandy Healthcare and Hope Family Medical Center are proud to announce the newest addition to their staff and team of over 200 dedicated employees and medical professionals. Podiatrist Dr. Cheryl Stalder Cheney has joined Big Sandy Healthcare at the Hope Family Podiatry Center in Sagersville on Beriah Boulevard, just a couple of doors up from the Lee's Famous Recipe. For anything minor or serious foot or ankle related, Dr. Stalder Cheney is now accepting new patients at Hope Family Podiatry Center in Salyersville. I've got a few more details and we'll have an interview to come with Judge Executive Matt Weirman hopefully very soon, but I'll share with you the big announcement uh, as it is about a three quarter of a million dollar project to improve a, a significant area of the downtown and uh, West Maple Street area. More on that in just a few moments. Right now, Tuesday night's McGuffey County Board of Education meeting coverage, relatively brief meeting, a few items of business. Uh, it's just kind of a procedural meeting, if you will, as they're doing a little housekeeping, so to speak, getting ready for school to start wrapping up the previous year, still on the books, getting ready for the next school year, which is getting closer, of course, all the time. Those brief details include the summer feeding program is still ongoing and it's been a very successful summer. There will be no deliveries of summer lunches on July the 23rd in just a few days because bus drivers have to report for a mandatory training session that day, but you will be able to pick up meals that are being prepared at the Sagersville Grade School. For all parents out there with Head Start students beginning classes soon, July the 22nd, 23rd, and 4th, there will be a Head Start screening and child fine event at the Head Start building, which is up on the hill behind the Board of Education from 8.30 till 3.30. Principal Chris Meadows updated the board and superintendent on plans to soon have all of the banners and other awards or recognitions, if you will, from previous sports teams and individuals hung in the new McGoffa County High School Gymnasium in the next few weeks. And lastly, the board recognized they now completed 32 years of service to the school system and county by its superintendent. I heard through the grapevine that uh, Mr. Hilton here has completed 32 years of service and just wanted to congratulate him. Yes, Long King, sir. Education system. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's worth it or not, but uh, thank you. I, no, I, I've enjoyed every, most of the moments I can yeah. say, it, but most of the moments I've been. I want to thank you all just for the opportunity to serve. I'm winding down, I'll say that, um, uh, but uh, I'll continue to do the best I can. And I appreciate the board. It, it, it makes it a lot easier to work and do a job like this. And I want to tell the parents and the people out there, there's nothing personal about some of the things that are going on. It's, it's always difficult when you're dealing with uh, a lot of people and a lot of personnel and students. and. It's always been my goal is to take care of the children and try to put the children's team first. It may not seem like it on some decisions, but that's that's why I, the way I've always tried to operate is do what is best. And, and it's trying times right now with all the things that are going on in Frankfurt with the funding issues. And, uh, I feel like I, I'm more of a manager right now trying to make sure we keep our monies uh, secure above the board and where we can take care of some of the things. Uh, there's a lot of things we would like to do, but Unfortunately, we just don't have the funding to, to do those things, but we try to do the best we can. And, and again, it's a lot easier to work with uh, individuals that uh, understand and uh, they have the same compassion for children as I do, and I appreciate you all. And hopefully, uh, uh, we'll have a good school year this coming year. So it's $16.5 million and then some, really, that has been announced in Transportation Cabinet Awards today for non-traditional community transportation improvements. 35 counties have received funding for 42 projects across the state. I'd actually spoken 
with Mac Wireman, McGoffin County Judge Executive, a few days ago. Uh, he was hopeful at the time, after being in contact with the Transportation Cabinet, that McGoffin County uh, might see some benefit from this uh, announcement. And indeed, we have. Governor Bevin and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, they announced those millions of dollars in investments to fund 42 transformative community projects across the state, funding 80% of the total project cost. Uh, the awards support safe connections and accessibility, primarily through sidewalk improvements to the general pedestrian, children, and disabled populations. This is what I know. The grants from the Transportation Cabinet total $16.6 million. McGoffin County's share is $560,000 of that. Mr. Wyman, Judge Wyman, is also under the impression that there's a match from the state, $440,000, totaling $700,000. Now, the exact specifics of which I'll let him share with you later, but per my prior conversation with him, he was under the understanding that this was going to be from downtown Sagersville eastward on Route 40. And this was going to be for a sidewalk improvement, widening of the road, connecting retail and recreation for a significant distance as it traveled on Route 40. Uh, a big facelift and certainly a, a major remodeling for that area in regards to sidewalks and the like. We will let him tell you more about it, but just glad to be able to make the announcement here and share some good news with you. Right after this, now let me tell you this before we take one quick break, before we wrap up the show with a whole lot more. The McGoffin County Community Day Festival has been set, as you well know. It was set last year, the day after it was over. But they've got a long list, of course, of the participating organizations, and a lot of them the same as always, with kettle corn and foot-long hot dogs and loaded fries and fried this and fried that and raffles and train rides, and the list goes on. We'll be talking about Community Day very soon as it's quickly approaching. And that's as good of a segue into our break as I could get. It's time to see what a great time just 10 bucks can get you while you help out a lot of amazing organizations. It's time for the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day, featuring Russell Moore in third time out, Ralph Stanley II and the Clinch Mountain Boys, Hammertown, Blue Highway, Nathan and Chessie Arnett Band, Route 1081, Terry Miller and Traveler, plus the Project Echo Kids and a special performance by Waylon Bays. And of course, more food, fun, games, and prizes than you can stand. And not only does your 10 bucks get you in, but it also gets you entered to win this Ford Fusion to be given away that night and kids under 12 get in free at the 16th annual McGoffin County Community Day Saturday, August the 17th all starting at 10 a.m. Just like that, we've jumped into the spring allergy season with all the buds and blooms, tree and grass pollen, mold, and all the nasal congestion, sneezing, itchy nose and eyes and throat that they cause. Don't get caught off guard. Protect yourself daily with a quick trip to Parkway Pharmacy for over-the-counter and prescription relief. And you can always log into parkwayfarmacy.com to have your prescriptions ready when you get there at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. Your new IGA has fresh brewed coffees and delicious donuts made seven days a week. Daily made breads piled high with any meat or cheese you can think of. And come and taste the salads, broccoli and cauliflower, cornbread, and their gourmet chicken salad made fresh right here. They've got fruit and vegetable and meat trays made with a little love and celebrate anything with perfectly professionally made cakes. All fresh and ready for your next meal, party, or event at your Sagersville IGA where it's a new day, place, and way to shop. Next tonight's community calendar brought to you by your local Farm Bureau agent, Doug Green. That's a prelude, of course, to a heat index and advisory that we have for you weather-wise. First, don't forget that tomorrow the Sagittal Grade School has camp kindergarten starting in the morning at 10, last till 1. Kindergartners and moms and dads, a great time to come meet teachers and classmates. Each kid gets a new Eagle t-shirt of their very own. Lunch is also going to be served if your child's going to be five on or before August the 1st. They're eligible for kindergarten. Baptize me with fire, says Danny Roy Ministries, who will be at the altar here in McGoffin County on 460 West in Sagersville. Tomorrow night at 7, Saturday at 7, and Saturday at 1, they're having a big free giveaway, free food, clothes, lunch, shoes, and lots of other things while supplies last. They hope to see you there. Flag football signups are this Saturday in the Lobby of the McGoffin County High School, 10 to 12, and then next Friday from 6 to 8 at the high school. This is for kids in grades kindergarten through third grade, players and cheerleaders, and they need coaches too. 
And this is exactly how you get announcements just like these, including birthdays and anniversaries, which we most often have on the show. Just let me know and we'll let everyone else know. Two announcements come tonight in lieu of our obituaries. First, a reminder of services to be held tomorrow at 1 for 42-year-old Joe Allen, who is survived by his wife, Frida Williams Allen, daughter, Jolena Allen, and stepsons, Keith and Heath Howard. Visitation is tonight. Services tomorrow at 1 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And lastly, in loving memory, this to be announced in honor of C.M. Gasberg on what would have been his 44th birthday from Amanda, sister, brother-in-law, family, and friends. Well, the shower sticking around a little longer than what we had expected. Barry just not giving up, but on his way out now, just in time to let the heat move in in its place. And we do have, of course, that heat advisor in effect, as I told you, and as I'm going to repeat myself again, uh, in effect starting as soon as tomorrow. Now, in lieu of that fact, the McGoffin County Fiscal Court has opened up the Lloyd M. Hall Community Center. I also want to say the newly cooled with the new HVAC units in the gymnasium, Lloyd M. Hall Community Center. They will be using that facility as a cooling station starting tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. That will last throughout the heat of the day tomorrow and Saturday, and then it will be open to the public on Sunday again should the heat linger. We're still kind of watching that time frame. Uh, but nevertheless, the community center open for a cooling station starting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock and then lasting as needed. Yes, a heat advisory in effect, and this is why you're looking at it. Heat indices anywhere from 100 and then some, and this a pretty close approximation, but you know, you're talking about 100 to 105 degrees, and we could all see 105 degrees before it's over. So a heat advisory firmly in effect. Now, this is from noon tomorrow through Saturday evening, through the heat of the day, through about 8 o'clock. The heat and humidity will combine to give us heat indices of between 100 to 105, some folks hitting 106 or better in parts of eastern Kentucky, with an expansive dome of high pressure developing and covering much of the area to end our work week and, of course, start the weekend. And as a result, we're going to hit those triple-digit marks as far as heat indices are concerned. As far as Sunday, there's still the potential for the heat index to be over 100. Right now, we're not included in that heat advisory for Sunday but that might change, and it's going to be so close, the same precautions really need to prevail. As for the particulars of your forecast, well, we saw some showers roll through and hang on a little longer, mostly a result of Barry hanging on a little bit longer. But they're pretty much out of here, and we've got partly cloudy skies above the downtown Sagersville. Your news today, Sagersville Independent office and stu- Offices and Studios, a low of 69 tonight, some patchy fog. Tomorrow, we up. We're going to see the heat. Even though we're expecting a temperature of around 89, the humidity will make it feel, as we said, much closer to, if not more than 100. Keep that in mind. Mostly sunny and dry tomorrow. Nighttime low still right around 70. Saturday, and we'll add a couple of degrees to that. Still have the humidity in place. Still have that heat advisory in effect as well. Mostly sunny and a nighttime low of 70. Sunday, we'll back off to about 88. But the humidity is not going to back off quite so much. And really, we could still, like I said, see heat indices hit close to that triple digit mark so just take a little extra precaution move a little slower stay a little cooler the best advice we can give and of course check on pets and elderly and all those folks who might me might be more susceptible to the heat starting tomorrow after the weekend i know that's not a phrase you want to talk about ever but after the weekend monday we've got another system that rolls in and we're going to see a big hit temperature wise and we're going to hang in the low 80s four days 81 mostly cloudy and more than likely some showers maybe thunderstorms starting off on monday and temperatures not climbing thereafter for a few days tuesday and wednesday still holding on to the low 80s right at it and 59 62 respectively for your nighttime low we'll see a little sun and some lesser shower chances tuesday and wednesday but still 80 degrees maybe even by thursday of next week still holding in to the low 80s with some much cooler air coming our way and probably very few complaints about it that's it that's a wrap not near the news that we have for you we'll try to squeeze the rest of it into tomorrow's show thank you for watching